I want us to share briefly concerning the importance of raising a godly generation. If you've been so keen in what is happening in the land, and sometimes the, 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 the hot temperature politics that sometimes arises, the difference that we're seeing between our armed forces. The other time I was watching a clip and it's like, there is this police who is, who is being slapped properly by a military people and are really working on him so hard. I may not have gotten the, the, the bigger story. Why were they really beating a fellow a military person like them and it's like it really disturbed me and uh, I was asking myself if we have a military community or armed forces who are raised up in the in a godly fearing way who respect law and discipline and if you had lawyers who have been raised in a godly way and follow the protocol of what it is supposed to be done in law and make sure that whatever they are doing, they are operating within the guidance of what laws expect. I want to tell you without blinking my eyes, we will be having a very powerful, wonderful nation. True? If you had a, 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 a young people or, or politicians who have been raised up in a godly way. The story of corruption that has eaten this land will be a thing of the past. The story of things that are not connecting. For example, people have been given tender to work on the roads. They will do a road with such a passion, with something in mind. This is my country. I want to give the best for my country. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. And so, I want to say that uh, I agree with the words of Dobson that if in our early ages, you could be having a teenager, you could be having children who are still in primary, and especially focusing on children who are still in primary, for some of us who are here, if you don't spend quality time and you don't have headache, on ensuring that there is some level of discipline, there is the godly rebuke, there is a time to prepare and work on them on, to raise them up in a godly way. Friends, I will tell you for free that there are some edges which are coming up there where for real we'll have headache in raising our own people, our own offering, offspring, sorry. And so the book of uh, Proverbs, if, if, if you turn with me to the book of Proverbs 22, verses 6, the Bible says, direct your children into the path, into the right path, and when they are older, they will not leave it. I wish you'd give me in the uh, message Bible, if you could give it in message. Okay. Yes, look at that. Point your kids, uh, let's lose the word children. Point your children or kids in the right direction. And when they are old, they won't be lost. Friends, you've heard some of our pastors from this pulpit have been grieving because of the kind of things we see up Mirema Drive. In the night when you drive along that route, you meet some people, some young, young people who are our children, not necessarily from this church. When I'm talking about our children now, I'm becoming more communal. In the olden days, raising a child used not to be for one parent, the biological parent. A child used to be seen as a community assignment. I like the way our parents in the old used to raise us. When you are in the marketplace, we end a market. No me patikana una misbehave. Auta jua viboko ambao zita kuchapa. Na utatandiku watu wapapo kwa marketplace. And then your parents will be told. And when you get home and your parents have been told of what has happened. 
hata umeenda kumshtaki yule mzazi ambao umjui ambaye alikuchapa at that particular time the parent anatoa nyingine tena anakucharaza and you'd think that the parents in the old days used to be so brutal they don't know what they were doing but believe me a number of kenyans who have been disciplined a number of kenyans who have changed their lifestyle they've been raised from that kind of uh, and uh, uh, parenthood and so this bring me to a summary of three kind of parents that we could be having in our church today one of the parents that we we have is called authoritative parent okay let me start with authoritarian there is one parent you call authoritarian parent now authoritarian parent ni kama sasa hao zamani where viboko was readily available in season and out of season and uh, every small item before you sit to discuss tare utakuwa umecharazwa and they used to be so militant in the way they discipline their children the authoritarian parent their yes is yes and their no is no they were so firm in what they want to see happening in their family and to some extent you'll really some of us who are brought up in such kind of a situation you would appreciate these parents for the work they did in our lives to bring us this far and so training is not easy to be authoritarian parent in this generation is not that easy we are living at a times when we have given so much room for debate with our sons and daughters until that aspect of discipline is felt but from a distance the other type of parent and, and just before i finish that uh, most of the kids who have been raised by authoritarian parents there are some characters that you can talk about them one in school or even the places they work there is high level of discipline they are orderly they walk upright when they mean to love the lord they mean it hakuna jokes beside it when you are seeing parents, children who have been raised by authoritarian parent you'd see a discipline an example of a, somebody who has been employing the discipline uh, in in the military forces they keep order they follow command without questioning and there is something that we're going to talk about behind that kind of level of discipline the other type of uh, uh, parent is authoritative remember authoritarian does not have room for debate kama ni mbaya ni mbaya kama ni kiboko ni kiboko they don't have time for debate but authoritative parent okay they they are they are they are tough they practice what you call tough love and they need they make sure that you the children that are raised within them have some level of discipline they are also very orderly one thing that uh, i've noticed with the time their level of spiritual growth can also be seen they grow they have passion for godliness anything that matters to raise them and to bring them closer to god is seen when authoritative parent says time up it's devotional time nobody questions everybody is seated in the sitting room and it is time to break the word and one thing i like about authoritarian parent authoritative parent they are they, they are they are continuous in what they stand for they don't change rules because of emotional difference they feel like mm huyu nataka kumhurumia leo they are so consistent in what they want to see happening in the life of their family members and in the life of their children and so 
This is what Solomon in the book Luke chapter 2 is telling us. Uh, no, sorry, in Proverbs 22 verse 6 tells us that train up a child in the way he should grow and uh, when he is old, he will not depart from it. And I pray that that truth will work through our lives as parents. The last type of a parent that I want to highlight this morning is a parent you call permissive parent. Permissive parent. Now, permissive parent is this parent whom we could call easygoing. Everything a child asks is, yes, yes, mommy, I'll give you. Yes, daddy, I'll give you. A permissive parent will not question. He knows this young man who is living under his roof, who is not paying rent, but comes home late and does not want to be asked where they have come from. And it is past agreeable time. Maybe assuming that your agreeable time in that home is that as long as you are under my roof, 8.30 or 8, come home and call it, no, no, merudi by 8, let's agree by 8, everybody should be in their home. And then this, this young person one time walks into the house a little bit drunk, he could smell some kapombe from outside. And permissive parent does not question where you've come from, whom you've been with, and why are you so late? Now, that is the beginning of trouble that escalate to the kind of crisis sometimes we see in the nation of Kenya. And I would not blame some things that we see in the young people. I will start by me as a parent. I will ask myself that tough question. Am I a permissive parent? Permissive parents are easygoing. When they have kids who are still young, they have gone for a fellowship. And I want to, to give this as an, uh, as, as, a, an, as an example. That you've gone for a ladies' fellowship or you have visited a home, and then the child that has been given leeway by a permissive parent starts misbehaving kwa wageni. Unapata amengia kwa drawer ya watu, ameanza kutoa vikombe ya and then you go, Toto, unafanya nini? Now, that is a permissive parent. In our old days, in our time, authoritarian parent, utajua, utajua viboko zimekuland juu yako, ataka mweni mdogo, mpaka you told the line at a tender age. Permissive parent have really contributed a lot towards some of the mistakes we are seeing in the life of young people. And I want us to pray that we are going to arise and come out of a situation we call permissive parenting. One thing that I've noticed with children who have been raised up by permissive parents, number one, they are rude. They can be rude. Waneza kakujibu kikitu bakushanga ala, have you watched your age and you've compared with the person that you are talking to? They don't care what is your age. Permissive kids who have been raised up from a permissive kind of setup. Permissive children do not think that, they always think that everything is for their benefit. Sacrificing to do something for somebody else is at all order. And that's what happens with some people that have been raised from a permissive parenting situation. And so in all these things, Pasi, what are you saying? I'm saying, let's look at the example of Jesus. He was also a child at one particular point. And he was raised by parents. I can't tell whether the parents were permissive or they were authoritative. But one thing I know, I know about the parenting that Mary and Joseph the earthly father was, they gave godly direction. Amen? Of course, when we look at the life of Christ, at one point, 
when Jesus is questioning him, their parents is, don't you know that I was in my father's house? We can, we, we, we can put J Jesus in a very special context in this matter. But in uh, Luke chapter number 2, verses 52, the Bible tells us that Jesus grew in wisdom, in stature, and in favor with God and man. And when I'm looking at those three aspects that makes Jesus who he was, I really admire this and I pray that it will be also be found in our midst in DCIK. That we are going to raise up children that are full of wisdom. And where do they get their wisdom? They get their wisdom because you are consistently in a place of prayer with your family. You are consistently in studying God's word with them. You are consistently showing them the godly direction. And you know, when, when Jesus grew in wisdom, this is what we need. We need kids whom you don't have to tell them everything. Women a job, they have been they are of age, they can cook for themselves, and there is something that can be worked on in the kitchen. They don't have to wait for you. You are a single mother. You are coming home, and you found that everything has been put in order. The house is clean. You didn't ask them to do it because there is some level of wisdom. There is some level of growth in their life. They take responsibility. That is the word. They take responsibility serious. You've gone home, you've come back to work, you find that everything is in good order. The opposite is also true with the permissive ch ch uh, parenting. This guy has just been watching, has been seated on the screen from morning to that time. Ukimuliza memaliza homework, sijamaliza. Ukimuliza na zile vitamba zinafanya nini juu ya meza kwa viombo. Sema and God is wondering, I've given you responsibility to raise up a godly generation. What part are you playing in raising a godly generation? We are being reminded that uh, in Psalms 127 verses 3, Behold, children are a heritage of gift and gift from the Lord. The fruit of the womb a reward. They are a reward to us. They are a fruit of our womb. And anything that is out of fruit, uh, that can be called a fruit, is something that is bringing, ad adding value to our existence. Amen? Then the, the Bible also says that Jesus grew in stature and in favor with God and man. And of course, when you're talking about stature, we're looking at the physical aspect of a human anatomy. But I want us to look at it from a different angle. Our young people fear work in, the, in a certain age bracket, where anything that involves manual becomes a stress. But if they are waking up early, sometimes they do practice, they do some exercise, they are physically keeping fit, it comes to a place where when you give them serious work, they enjoy doing it. Including one of these days when the shambani ushago and you give them a line. Uh, our mom used to tell us the way when they were growing up, they were mtu walikuwa napewa laini ya kulima. And you wonder, nitafika kule sangapi. When I was also growing up in Malindi, my dad used to, uh, we used to have this company, piece of land, where we are, we are allowed to do some farming but you, don't, you are not allowed to possess because by that time, there are no structures which are coming up. So we'd go to the shamba and I think I was in class three or four there. And I was be told, Leo, chukua kaka jembe kadogo, utapalilia hizi maindi mpaka pale. And it used to be such a stress. But you will not leave that place until you umemaliza, nduingie kwa nyumba. So the earlier you start working on it, the better for you. And so I have seen this kind of, kind of parenting and it really challenges me and asking me these questions. What kind of a parent am I? Can I rejoice with my children to say they are, a, they are heritage, they are a gift that God has given me? 
And so for some of us who are still young parents, there is room. There is room for change. There is room to start working on how we're raising up our children. And there is room to start doing it now before it is too late. And so I've been asking myself then, how do we raise a godly generation? What do we do to our children to bring up that aspect of godly generation? I will start by putting this. Number one, create special time for each child in your house. Create special time for each child in your house. You have four children, two boys and two girls, or you have three boys and one girl. Ensure that across the year you have a program that says this holiday I'm taking so and so out. It is me and her. And it is at that particular time that you sit with your daughter and you want to find out how was school. What is happening in school? Is there something that, by the way, before you even reach a place where you are taking children out or your son and daughter out, there must be time that you have created a rapport with them. The question that you need to ask, are your children your friends? Are you buddies with your children? When was the last time you just decided, uh, Njuguna, I want to take you out for lunch? And without resistance, ah, daddy, come on, you to end there. I don't have any, I'm not scared of taking you out. Like, in there are some situations you will start asking, and, and then they start asking, are you sure you, it's you who is taking me out? You of all. Let me think twice. It becomes a challenge. So the question is, how free are we with our children? as they are growing up. Sorry, I didn't mean to have a parenting seminar, but I feel this is what the Lord has laid in my heart, that I feel it is very important because I'm looking at a church or children who have been raised in the right way. They bring up a church that is healthy, and so many churches that are called healthy church presents a healthy nation. And if all the nations who would have been raised in a godly way, will be having a healthy world. But when you look at the things that are, are happening currently, you are asking yourself questions like, where is our world taking us? And so each of our children are different. Okay? Depending on their age brackets, they are going through different challenges at different points in life. They need a variety of things from us. You need to find out from them, one-on-one, -on -one, what are the spiritual needs of my children, what are their emotional needs, what are their physical needs. These are key important issues. So it's very important that every time we have a holiday time, you create time to find out from this child, ambo shule zimefungwa, shule ilikuwa haje. I hear there is a story about lesbianism. And the last time when I visited the parents, another parent talked to me and was like, was very scared about lesbianism in school. How has it affected you? Does it affect you? Do you know what, it's, what is happening in your school? And those are the moments a free child will tell you the truth of what is happening on the ground. You will have a point to pray for. You will have a reason to where you need to walk with this young man or this young person. But when they come, you are so busy, you don't have time for them. It's good to make money and we are all looking for it. But there is importance of pausing to find out how are my children doing. The second thing that we are going to do to raise a godly child is be fast to forgive. Forgiveness, forgiving is an art that needs to be developed from a tender age. And the more a, as a parent, you will be so broken to say, I shouted at you, 
I brushed you wrong style and I'm sorry that this happened. We can be friends. The child is growing with a very safe and secure environment and feeling like, yeah, at least I have a parent who can reason with me, who is so human to realize that there are things that sometimes we say or do that hurt our children. And on in Ephesians chapter number six, I know as parents we like talking about children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. And verse two, mm -hmm, thank you. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with the promise, that it may be well with you and you may live long on earth. Verse four, and you fathers, I would also put you parents, you mothers, do not provoke your children to wrath, but bring them up in the training, in admonition of the Lord. Bonesu asifiwe. And so that verse 4 is what brings, me, brings this point. There are moments when out of our emotional challenge, maybe kundatu vile accounts zimekata, iyo budget aingiani, alafu umekuja home kama ukono fire. Any small, small thing triggers asira na very rough, roughness. And then you end up provoking a child and you are wondering why your children are not your friends. It all begins with where is the line of forgiveness and how, what am I doing to bring my children so close to my heart? And so remember, children learn more from our actions rather than what we say or we tell them. You'll be the first person to forgive. You are raising a child who is also very loyal, broken. A child who can also be corrected because I know from permissive children who have been raised, they don't accept correction easily. They become so rude and rough simply because they never had somebody tell them, I'm sorry, this I did wrong. Give them a biblical perspective. That is the third issue, part of raising up a godly child. Give them a godly perspective. As you live, as you live your life with your children, you, you need to be a voice of truth, a voice of wisdom that needs to be heard in that house. A voice of truth and a voice of of wisdom. Where do you draw your wisdom? The best place of withdrawing our wisdom is from a biblical perspective. How often do we have family time? What is our family altar like? When was the last time you sat down and you told your son or your daughter, today it is your turn to share with us God's word? And now because you are doing it randomly, Everybody is like, hey, I need to think seriously in the morning because I might be told this evening that I'm the one who is sharing. And in the process of, it could be out of fear, it could be out of commitment, in that process of doing things, a child is focused in being raised up in a godly perspective. Talk about quiet time. It's important for us to talk to our children, our people in the house about quiet time. Your quiet time can be in the morning. It can also be late in the evening when everybody has gone to sleep. There is that opportunity that you are telling this son, this daughter, hey, by the way, you know that God speaks. Is there a time when you freely felt that God spoke a word to you? And those are the moments you tell them, the moment you spend your time reading God's word, the moment you are so curious to hear the voice of God, that is the beginning of you hearing and understanding that God speaks and God can speak even through you. And God can use you to speak to us as your parents. Talk to them about quiet time. There are also moments when, especially I like the young ones. I'm talking about age four, age five, age three, age six up to age uh, nine, that, that, that season in lower primary, there is very key importance of listen 
to, their, to them praying. So that should be my fourth, my, my fifth point. Listen to them praying. As they are praying, you are hearing the issues of their heart. You can actually easily tell, my daughter, my son has reached this level of spiritual growth because from what they are praying, I'm, I'm hearing somebody who is maturing. I'm hearing somebody who is becoming godly. I'm hearing the fear of the Lord that is taking place in the life of my son or my daughter. Listen to them pray. And so when your child needs attention from you over something, as a parent, you need to stop being busy and you pay attention to this son or daughter. Number six, bless them frequently as possible. Raising a godly child. If there is anything that God expects us as parents to do is speak a word of blessing in the morning. If you have an opportunity of speaking a blessing in the evening, let's speak a blessing in the life of our children. And when we do that, we are, I'm saying it is very important for children to pick from you as a parent um, how you love them by the fact that you lay hands on them and speak words of hope and the blessings. Take time to pray and take time to pray a prayer of blessings. As you pray for their future, you even start praying for their future spouse at a tender age. The responsibility of raising a, married, a, mar a marriageable child, daughter, and a marriageable son begins so early. Amen? I'm in Melissa to teenagehood. You start bringing the picture of what, how lovely a family would be, but there are some, some key things that have to be adhered to. Godly living, holiness, uprightness, what does it mean to raise a Christian godly relationship? And all these things is part of our training. Do we have quality time with our children? Lastly, time cannot allow me to do everything. But lastly, partner with your children. Partner with them. Children need to know from you that as an adult... There are times when you have issues that you are struggling with. They need to learn that you are not perfect. You make mistakes and you are the first person to say, On this decision to run this kind of business, I made a mistake. Please, guys, forgive me. But when you are a Mr. Perfect, you are all in all. You can never say sorry. You can never share your witness. They will also grow with a mentality, with the idea that anyway, everybody is perfect in their own rights. So why should I submit to you? After all, you did this and this and you have never heard you say sorry about it. So why should I say sorry? And that is carried not only from the home, it goes to a workplace, it goes to a nation, it goes to a place whereby we have some crude rulers because behind the scene, they were never taught by their parents that there are times when you need to say sorry to bring people closer to you. Bonesu asifiwe. As I bring this to a conclusion, I would want to say that uh, Malachi chapter number 2 verses 15. Did he not make them one, that is man and woman, with a portion of the spirit in their union? And what was the one, uh, and, and, and that's what was the uh, God seeking for. Can I get, yeah. But did he not make them one, having a remnant of the spirit? And why one? He seeks a godly offspring. Therefore, take heed to your spirit and let none deal treacherously with the wife of our youth. I know that one touches so much about marriage and the importance of living in unity as a family. But if there's going to be oneness in the spirit, I want you to be reminded that as parents, and even as parents-to-be, the reason why God would want us to, be in a, to, to, to join up in a marriage one, one time, for those ones who are yet, not yet married, God is seeking for a godly offspring. A godly, godly children, godly generation. And all the assignment begins with you 
as a person. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. But I also want to challenge us as young people who are in this service today and those ones who are listening. There are four important things that as parents we are also seeking from you. If you have to be this kind of a child who is a, an heritage, a gift, we are looking for a gift who is full of obedience. And obedience grows in several ways, in several levels. The first level of obedience is obey, is to obey. Ephesians 6, 1. There is need uh, to obey as a child. It is your duty. It's a duty. It's not even a request. It's a duty. A hundred percent you are expected to, be, to walk in obedience to your parents. And Jesus did that at age 12. He, if, you, if, you, if you follow the story of Jesus, he was still obedient to the parents. Okay? Then there is the aspect of submission. This means you obey out of devotion. It's not that umekewa viboko ndio obey. It's just come automatically. You find yourself enjoying obeying. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. And then, honor, Ephesians 6 verse 2. Yeah, if you, if you have it, you can give it. Yeah, honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with a promise. And what is the promise? That all you may enjoy long life. With long life, the Lord will satisfy you. Amen? And you know what? Honor should begin early. And for the young people who are in the house this morning and the children who might be watching this, I would want to say, that moment dada metoka a job, na kiatu kikuna matope, especially wakati wa rain season. Alafu ameka kiatu hapo inje, Honor will push you to pick those shoes, clean them so thoroughly, put them so nice and put them back in order until mzazi akitafuta mtu ambaye kubariki sema eh na wewe umekuwa kinibariki this this time my shoes are always neat. You started practicing honor at a tender age. And that honor will be seen and it is your, for you, I would want to say it's your time for planting honor. When your time comes, you are a parent and you are aging, honor will still go back to you because time will also come in for you to reap what you've planted. And the last thing that I want to say is in out act of obedience in growing, discipline. Discipline of children should be intended right from primary it's something that works on their character training and part of rebuking and chastening and scoring scourging or rather caning should be done with some order and i would want to urge parents you have challenge maybe you have a, a situation ukipata nafasi kuchapa mtoto Unamchapa kama mbo na uwa nyoka. Now, the moment you start beating your child as if you are killing a snake, you are losing it. They will not respect you. You will struggle for that honor, and that honor will never come. But when you, you, you bring and you say, come, let's reason together. We had agreed that you did this, and you did this. What is your punishment on that? We had agreed that this is the time to arrive at home, but you are becoming at this time. What is your punishment for that? You don't allow them so much to choose their punishment, but you also choose a punishment that is humanly acceptable. And in the process, we are raising a generation that is full of discipline, a generation that loves God, a generation that when, you are, when every time is over, you can look back and say, I'm proud of my son. I'm proud of my child. I want to wind it up by this quote from Charles Haddon Spurgeon. Charles, in his book, one time says, let no Christian parents fall into the delusion that Sunday school or children's ministry is intended to ease them of their personal duties. 
The first and the most natural condition of things is for Christian parents to train up their own children in, and in, in the process of nurturing and admission of the Lord. So what are we, Pajon is, is simply saying is that, uh, hey guys, Sunday school teachers and children workers are only coming to supplement what you are supposed to have been doing at home. They are only coming to do what? To supplement. But God has so much expectation from you. You do it so well so that when your time is over, you've left a legacy that will be remembered to have raised a godly generation. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you that your word is life. How I pray that God, as we grow, you will teach us to love you. And you will teach us how to do it and how to perfect the act of raising a godly generation. Would your word continue to work through our lives as we seek you, may we find you, and may you teach us how to do it. It's not easy, but it is possible with you when you have taken charge and you have taken control of our lives. This I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless his word.